Hi, this is Farrow Kalemi at George Mason University with a brief uh, note on how to use stratified covariate balancing using the R package. First, you need to install the package. The command to install it is shown here. Note that the S and the B in stratified balancing is capitalized and that the R console is sensitive to uh, lower and upper case letters. After you install the package, please also add it to the library. Before you start to use the package, you need to prepare your data. One of the first things you should do is to remove all the impossible values. Sometimes in electronic health records, data like are entered that are uh, for demonstration purposes and usually they have a negative ID. Sometimes there are values, uh, missing values are indicated by zeros as opposed to a missing code. Uh, so you will have something like a zero blood pressure, which is not possible uh, for a person who is alive. Uh, sometimes you will have visits after death uh, date because the death date is entered wrong. Uh, and there are also some logical inconsistencies like pregnant males and so on. Go to your, through your data and make sure that you remove all the impossible values. Covariate balancing and network modeling requires you to actually impute missing values. There are several ways of doing this and there are R packages that do this for you. You can use the mode for a simple approach in especially in a, parse, a sparse database. Uh, so the most common value is, re is, is estimated to be the, um, the value of the missing variable. Uh, you can also use the average for a continuous variable. You can predict from other variables uh, and in general in an electronic health record when there is no report of a diagnosis it does imply that there is no uh, diagnosis. Uh, in other words that no report is equivalent to absence of uh, that diagnosis. The initial analysis that we need to conduct is done on the binary indicators. So that means that you can use the R packages available to discretize your data. You can also do this by hand. For example, you can take a continuous variable and any value above the average or below the average can be uh, a binary variable. You can also use the non-monotone variables in non-monotone categories of variables, you can take the worst category as the indicator of uh, the uh, binary variable and all others as the zero variable. The important thing is to take as, a, as large a contrast as possible so that you can see the effect of that variable. Um, as before, when there are no reports, uh, then you can assume that that uh, variable has a zero entry for that diagnosis. So binary indicators are needed because we want to increase the number of matches between cases and controls. If we have a, a large number of uh, categories in each variable, as the number of categories increase, the number of uh, strata increases and the number of data points that fall into the strat strata decreases. So soon we will run out of data. So the binary variable assures us that the most of the variables, m most of the ma uh, cases are matched to controls. Uh, once the analysis is done, this process can be repeated for uh, non-binary data and uh, you can see if the analysis is sensitive to the levels of the variable. 
So in order to demonstrate uh, this package, we download the data here. You can download the data from this URL that is shown here. And this is a CSV file. You read it into the di directory. Make sure that you're working in your working directory and that you download the file into the working directory, not uh, elsewhere. The data that we have includes many variables. There are eight different variables, and it's about bundled payments. It's a simulated data, and the DME, Durable Medical Equipment, CL stands for Clinical Laboratory Test, P stands for Physician Billing, H stands for Hospital Billing, LTH stands for Long-Term Health Care Billing, and so on. And at the end, the last variable, BP, stands for bundled payment from CMS. So the idea here is that uh, these are all cost data, and so we have already made them into binary data above and below average, so we can now investigate whether hospital cost overruns, that means that hospital cost being above average, uh, affects the long-term care cost being ab above average or not. So that's the purpose of the analysis. Notice that to, uh, to, sh to see the effect of H on LTH, we will have to stratify only variables that precede H so that uh, we don't stratify uh, variables that could be causing LTH uh, or could be in the causal path of H and LTH. An important uh, limitation of the package is that you can only include the variables that you want to be analyzed. So any variable included in the function call would be stratified except the treatment and the outcome variable. So it's important that you don't stratify variables on the causal path. So, for example, if you have a treatment that has a complications, if you stratify the complications, you lose uh, uh, the impact on the outcome. You shouldn't stratify any mediators. You should examine the sequence of events so that you understand what is a mediator and what's a complication as opposed to history of illness. And you can also do a collider test. Uh, this is a set of conditional independence tests. All uh, parents of treatment should have, should become dependent if you stratify on treatment. So to to run the stratified covariate balancing, we have a function called strata disk, and here we are telling it that the uh, treatment is in the fourth column, the outcome is in the fifth column of the data set that we have called subset, and we want you, the computer to put the results into a file called balanced. The results here show the, the findings. It shows that the odds ratio of impact of treatment on outcome is 2.249, and this uh, is statistically si significant. Um, the number of cases matched is 6,052, and the 95% confidence interval is between 2.32 and 2.17. It's important to realize that the, the odds ratio provided here is the common odds ratios, and if it does not include a one-to-one -one match, it means that the the confidence interval does not include a one-to-one -one match. It means that it is significant. In this case here, it is statistically significant. Another point to make is that in large data, the effect size should at least be doubling. Here we see that more it has the effect size is more than double. Uh, we have about 10,000 cases in this data analysis, so it's considered large. 
and if it wasn't more than doubling we would we would still not accept that it was statistically significant so you need two things in large data both statistical significance and large uh, effect size note that about 60 percent of cases were matched to controls so about 40 percent were not matched so as the number of the variables the covariates increased fewer and fewer cases may get matched and therefore it may be difficult to generalize from uh, a stratified covariate balancing with large number of uh, covariates once you have done your analysis uh, you balance the data it's important to actually check the strata you have created by just saying a command like fix and putting the name of the data that where you put the balanced data here you see that in the first column the combination of the covariates the first row shows none and the second row shows just P the third row shows uh, DME and the fourth row DME and P combined and so on in each uh, the second column shows the number of cases that uh, fall into these uh, columns to in this uh, combination of covariates cases are remember those that are treated and uh, case weights are always one to one and uh, the outcome for these cases is shown in the fourth column so 376 out of 521 had the outcome uh, uh, the positive outcome the number of controls is given in this fifth and, uh, column and you can see that in the first row 1021 cases fall into controls for the strata in which none of the variables are present um, and the control weights are given at the last column these are the weights that if we multiply the number of controls will get us the exactly the same as number of cases and that equality between number of controls and number of cases makes the strata and the covariates in it uh, occur at the same rate among the cases and controls it's also important to check that once you have weighted the data that you ac uh, achieve uh, balance on the top we have the odds of the covariates given treated and untreated group on the left hand side we have the covariates the triangles show the before the weighting and the red squares show the after the weighting and we can see that the odds are one to one among treated and untreated group for all three variables all three covariates have been balanced finally it's important to do a sensitivity analysis to specify the sensitivity analysis you need to run a function called sense disk and you need to indicate the column where the treatment variable is the outcome where the outcome variable is the column where the outcome variable is and the data set here subset and you can put it in a new area called revised and then if you display the revised you see the sensitivity analysis